So first of all, Stephen, can California do this? Well, the answer is that they've got a couple of things in their favor. It's 27 years between now and 2045, and the cost of storage, energy storage or battery storage, which would be a major uh, means of, of carrying this out, is continuing to fall. We, we see it down 40% between now and uh, 2025, and uh, have every reason to think it's going to keep falling after that. So what is it that's going to help California do this? We are seeing uh, the economics of clean energy, of solar and wind get better. The economics are getting much better, and uh, California draws from a very, very long extension cord, if you will. Um, in addition to the power that it generates in state, California uh, acquires electricity from Canada, Mexico, and, and most of the states in between. So the, uh, the pool is very broad. The renewable resources, especially for wind and solar, are, are, are very attractive. And uh, as we know, California is an innovative place. So do we need new technology, or has that technology been developed already? Um, we always need new technology for meeting goals like this. Uh, and of course, it's impossible to predict what, what the exact outlines of the technology might look like. But between now and 2030, when um, some of the uh, interim mandates start to kick in uh, of this new law, it's very likely that we'll see step changes in the technology development in solar power, uh, as well as in battery storage, which are, are two very important tools to get there. And can they afford it? How much will it cost to get to 100% clean power for California, for example? Well, um, we don't have a number uh, for that. We are endeavoring to uh, arrive at one, but there are many, many variables uh, that are going to have some direct impact, uh, including such things as the mix of, uh, of generation that's going to actually eventually be, be the one used.